Okay, we're here at Oshkosh, getting near the end. Had a little rain last night. Blue skies again. We've already looked at this airplane, but there's something different about it. I'm Dan Johnson talking to Chip Irwin, and this is the Merlin light that created such a stir at last year's Midwest Expo, LSA Expo. Lots and lots of people enjoyed reading about that. You still will, but this has a big difference on it. There's a propeller out here in, in the wing, literally in the wing. Chip, what on earth am I looking at? A, a lot of great advantages. And uh, one of the one innovations that uh, we're introducing here at the show is a method that you can cut the takeoff and landing distance by 75%. And so we and, and this is for an airplane that already didn't use a lot of runway. Oh, right. We're already at about 120 feet to take off. So now we're down in like 20 or 30 feet to take off <laughs> and to land. So what this does. Okay, tell me more. We have a 12 kilowatt electric motor uh, embedded into the wing at the slot for the propeller. And we have a separate throttle for both of these motors linked together by computer. So when we take off, we can basically, we can double the thrust of the aircraft. So we're starting out at nearly 200 pound thrust with the Pelini on the nose and we're adding them 150 th uh, pounds more thrust. We're approaching the gross weight of the aircraft. <laughs> That's so, maximum which vertical like climb, F, Yeah, Jim. which is like F-16 numbers. <laughs> but we only- Maybe not but, quite as but, noisy though, But we I carry hope. The battery is can you can carry the whole battery for this in your hand because we're only uh, using it for say if you use it for 20 seconds at that climb rate you would take off in the 20 25 feet and you would climb over your 50 foot obstacle in the first few seconds and then you turn them off and climb on the gas motor and fly the rest of the mission I on the see, gas motor. I see. So That's this is just one. a takeoff and maybe some other assist. Well, we're but, gonna, there's two other not things. A, not a cruise thing. Three functions. Okay, go ahead. It could be used. To, as a, a flight sustainer if you're doing motor gliding with this. Ah, okay. But what it does when it stops, it automatically goes to horizontal. Oh, it does, okay. And it basically disappears. So you yeah, have no drag. You, you know, you might have a little leakage through here. You can see my hand coming up well, through the right. wing, but that's right, not but that's, much. The air doesn't really want to go there much. Well, when you're flying uh, horizontal, the, 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 there would be some, but there'll be a built-in gap seal Oh. So that's going to close it off to make sure that um, there's no no uh, airflow okay, cool. uh, leakage, so the wing stays efficient. So there's another phase two of the operation is when you're coming in on your final on an approach, uh, and when you're coming in in turbulent and windy conditions, you need to fly faster than your stall speed. Uh, but the faster you go with the exponential of kinetic energy, of course, the longer it takes to stop. Sure. So if you can come in at closer to your stall speed. You're, you're risking uh, aileron reversal or loss of control. But if you have these uh, motors running about 20%, oh, you're going. you can turn them on a minute before on the approach at 20%. That's, that's a lot of battery, even on a handful of batteries. I'm moving and the aileron have, a little bit here you for have you. You've blown ailerons and blown tail surfaces if we put the mo uh, motors on the tail as well. Now, it looks like it's right about in the middle of the yeah, aileron. Was that deliberate? Yeah, of course. Uh, but... What you have here is you have full roll control at zero airspeed. <laughs> you can ro you can move the wing up and down w before you even take the brakes off. Zero airspeed control of the aircraft. Of course, you're not going to do that in flight, but now you, when you have these coming in at 20%, you're much closer to the stall speed. You can, you can make a safe approach. And a normal landing, you, you land, but uh, you're waiting for the brakes to be effective with a little bit of weight to come on them. And, and you have your normal rollout. With, as soon as you touch down with this distributed electric propulsion on demand, you have the throttle, which now you put in neutral just before you touch down, then you put it in full reverse, and you have 100% of the, of the power going in reverse. And you can have the postage stamp or helipad landing and takeoff. So you can actually go in full reverse with this? Absolutely. I mean, with these blades, anyway. Yes. yes. Wow. Okay, that's cool. Now, you know, I'm standing here looking right down the leading edge of the wing, and it seems like kind of a long way back to the airplane. Are these wings longer than we saw before? Yeah, this is a brand new wing. Oh, tell and, me about that, oh, then. Oh, it's, it's fantastic. I, I just can't stop looking at it. it there, there's nothing like this, um, this wing that is uh, 3D tapered. It's all done on the high-end 3D software. 
and every rib is different. Every rib on the ailerons is tapered. Every rib on the flaps is tapered. The <laughs> flap is as long as the Merlin wing. It's a full-on slotted flap. Oh, yeah, you You'll can see, see it hanging down there. And, and it's, it's just very effective. And that brings the stall speed down to the uh, part 103, 24-knot stall speed. Yeah, or, or less. Oh, yeah, that's just less. the wing. You're even not that, even without this arrangement. Right. right. No, that doesn't count. This doesn't do anything for stall speed. That just uh, accelerates the airplane. So right. that won't be on the air, the, the production Merlin or Merlin lights. That's just a research project. Sure, sure. Uh, but and and what is, you got the name on here, but I'm not sure everybody can read it. What do you call this it's thing? It's called distributed electric propulsion on demand. And because you don't, explain very, that. It's very difficult to fly an electric airplane to have any endurance or speed. And to carry, and all your payload is sucked up in the batteries. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Right. So we have um, about eight pounds of battery per wing. It's basically nothing. It's four little RC packs. You <laughs> could take them out. They're mounted on this little hatch here. You can't see that comes out with uh, cam locks. That just uh, hinges down. Oh, and the bat batteries are carried right yeah. here. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, they're just okay. stuck on okay. there with Velcro. Well, they're that it's, light. Yeah, yeah it wouldn't they don't take weigh much. anything. You could just pop them off, take them home, charge them. Um, uh, if, if this was something that was had a lot of sorties, you could simply uh, run charge the batteries in flight off the um, oh, alternator. Off the oh, okay. If you're using the Polini 303, which is our stock power plant. However, this airplane with this long high aspect ratio wing is, is a very good platform for electric because it's clean and efficient. And no candle, I mean it is it's cantilevered, cantilevered there's no wing, strut there. It's got a windshield. You know, it's just a, a clean, light aircraft, and it's a great candidate for electric. So the number serial number two, which we're starting to uh, assemble now, will have electric 30 kilowatt motor on the front. Ah, uh, okay. So it's going to be a, if you had this option, and even the DEP on the tail, which is uh, something we haven't tested yet, but we we will. Theoretically, you could have a six motor Part 103 legal. Ultralight. <laughs> well, there's no limit on the number of yeah. propulsion devices. Yeah. That was never specified. Yeah. But, but that's a little you got to back top, up a little bit now. You threw something in there about the tail, which I've heard a little bit about, but nobody else has on this video. Well, so tell me what applies. you mean. So the same thing applies. You mean you'd but put this no, same arrangement in the tail? Almost, but we'd use a more like a, a four or five kilowatt motor. A smaller. Uh, because uh, uh, we don't want to put a lot of weight back there. Yeah, sure, This sure. is right on the CG. It doesn't matter. And the tail surfaces are a little bit skinnier. But the idea, uh, part of this uh, research project is to scale this up to our hyperstole, which is still on the drawing board. But that, that airplane will carry uh, 600 pounds, fly close to 150 miles an hour, a ceiling of more than 20,000 feet, and it'll land and take off on a helipad. Pretty cool. And that's what we'd like to start making next year with uh, the, our uh, innovation of a D-pod. Okay. So... Let's go back and let's separate the two a little bit. You got Merlin light yeah. with the with the. This will be the wing now on yes. the Merlin light. Is yes, that correct? That is okay. That is the stock so wing. So this longer one, the one we saw before at Midwest, was a somewhat shorter wing. How much shorter was it, by the way? Uh, actually, it's about five five feet on each side. Per shorter, side, quite a bit. Okay, yeah. so quite a bit. Yeah, that's a lot. So yeah, this is a. It's got a kind of a glider look to it yeah, already. Right. It, it's um. And, and you know about it, that it, kind of thing. It so. qualifies by the definition of a motor glider. Uh, but it doesn't have the L over D uh, of a of a quarter million dollar. Well, glider. yeah. But, but what but is for, L over but, D on this? Well, it's a 15, 15? 15 to sixteen oh, to one. Right. We we haven't measured exactly yet, but the computer projections are pretty accurate. Yeah, sure. Well, as an old glider pilot for many years, that's a, that, I mean that's not fifty to one like yeah. those big expensive right. jobs. That's true. Those are practically infinite, it seems. But fifteen to one's very good. You could definitely soar. Absolutely. Definitely easily soar this machine. Right, so cool. we're, we're going ahead right away with the electric motor. Right. It'll be a really great uh, electric, well, either a self-launching glider or just um, ultralight for morning and evening sorties and fly around very low because that's what's great about electric. Yep. I found that out and fly two, two, 300 feet and perfectly safe and comfortable and quiet. Mm -hmm.